Today, I'm going to cover branching strategies, which is one of the key area for both DevOps and the developers. In my earlier videos, I have covered deployment strategies with the real life or real world examples. So you can have a look at the real uh, life examples for the deployment strategies. Similarly, I'm going to cover the branching strategies and then I'll also explain what are the different strategies available in the branching. So without further delay, let us move into our today's topic. So why do we need, first of all, the branching strategies? So assume that you are constructing a building or a villa and it has a different set of features like construction, furniture, modern kitchen, paint, electricity and so on. Now, there are different departments who are working on the different type of areas. Ultimately, they will deploy to the house, to the location wherever it is identified. Location is a source and key. Every department actually understand first the location and then based on that, they will build their own construction like walls, ceiling, furniture, maybe modern kitchen, everything. So ultimately that will be deployed to here, to the location. So assume that construction department are defining or the manufacturing the walls, we are the manufacturing unit. They will bring it here and they will customize and they will deploy to the house. That is a general procedure. Similar way in the development environments, first they have something called source. They create a source code from here you call it as master here our, we have a location so the master will be taken by each and every department and then they'll start building the code for that so there are different feature teams or different technology teams who will be working on the different features for the same application those feature teams will deploy their features related code to the master however in the construction like different departments are deploying to the same land or the location so just keep this in mind i'm going to refer the house example while i'm walking through the strategies as well so moving on just let us understand how the branching was working in the past even nowadays few people based on the requirement they use the same Assume that there is one developer working in particular team. Okay, so I'm going to call it as master or main branch. So if only one guy is working on this particular code, so that guy will make some changes to the same code and then they will just deploy this to the directly production environments. There is no problem at all because there is a single developer, right? So he is going to deploy every time from the master. He will modify on the master and he will deploy to the production. So in simple terms, like say your the development team is working on the Visual Studio. There is a master. They will simply take this code into the Visual Studio, the respective code file, make the changes and then check in back to the source code, which is master. If one developer or very few developers are working, this could be a strategy. But what if the size of the application is like Amazon.com or maybe the Microsoft.com or Hotstar.com type of portals? And definitely there are plenty of features they need to build every month or in every sprint cycle. So thousands of developers keep working on multiple features in parallel in those cases this kind of uh, maintenance will never work that is a reason they should have some kind of strategy to make sure or to reduce the number of con conflicts or the issues from the code uh, management side of it so let us look into the different strategies which are available strategies get flow so Consider this first one as a master. This is M or main branch. Now, the development team A, development 
team B might be working, like maybe, maybe you can call it as feature team A, feature team B is working on the various features. So now we are going to create one another branch called dev branch. So this is a dev branch. Now my master code is not going to be disturbed. I have a separate branch called the master, sorry, dev. And then from here, I'm going to create another branch called feature, F1. I have another branch called F2. I'm really sorry for my way of drawing. Uh, I'm doing it with my mouse. That is the reason we got a lot of problems here. But however, so now the code which is in the main branch is replicated to the development branch. From the development branch, we have replicated to the feature one and feature two. So this feature teams will start working on whatever the feature it is uh, assigned to them. Same way feature two team also start working. Assume that the feature one team completes the feature here. So they will check in back to the development branch similarly maybe wherever the feature team is ready they will check check it back to the development branch so whichever the conflicts in case if there are kind of conflicts between these two features the developer will resolve here and here itself so that it will not spread to the other branches so the development is done now now they can decide whether they are going to release to the qa or they are going to release to the production whatever the more so i'm going to create one more branch called release so this is a release branch so we will move this sorry we'll move this code to the release branch so if everything is fine with this code this is going to be the released code that means they're going to deploy this to the production okay so this is a production environment they are going to deploy it after deploying it they are going to simply move the same code to the master branch that means you can tag it 0.1 or 1.0 the versioning uh, just to refer that like for example if you are uh, releasing 1.0 to the production so tag the same thing so that it will be easy to understand in future if you have to roll back on the stuff so now you have master release development feature one feature two so anyway the code has come back to the master after moving to the production maybe after a couple of days the team maybe the QA team or development team realize that there there is a small bug in the production it is leaked by mistake so this is when you will have to create one more branch called hard fix so if if the issue is very small and it doesn't impact much on the code side, but it impacts to the end user. Definitely that has to be fixed then and there, and they have to release it. So for that reason, we are taking the same version, whatever we have here, that onto the hot fix as a replica. First they will fix this problem here, and then they will, you can name it as 1.0, sorry, 1.1 here. 1.1 and they check the check back to the master branch once the release is done to the production okay now we i have uh, the latest code on the master branch which is 1.1 but meanwhile while this hotfix is happening the development team already took the latest version of the code and they started building the second version features right so they already again this taken into a new, uh, new feature branch and they started building it now this particular development branch also need the latest code which is actually fixed in the 1.1 right so that is the reason that code has to be checked in into the development branch as well that means development branch should pull the changes whatever happened this is called pull request so they have to pull the changes from the master to development same way in case if the features are being built they can either pull to the features or they can just wait until the feature development is done when they do it back they can uh, notice was a it depends on the development team and the devops like what strategy they are going to follow during these changes it's completely depend on them so in a nutshell you have master branch development branch feature number of features branches 
then you also have a release branch in case if any issue occurred and no uh, identified after production then you can also have the hotfix it's completely dependent on or the bugs which you may receive so let, let us show in the nice picture i know my drawing is worse the git flow you can see master then we will replicate the same code what is there in the master to the develop then you will take the feature branches so each development team will work or feature teams will work on the respective features and then they will pull back all those changes to the development branch and then they will get to the release then after release once the code is deployed to the production then the same code will be moved to the master and it will be tagged to one some version so 1.1 1.2 in case if there is a issue then we have to create one more branch called hotfix for the respective from the respective code and then they, they will fix that small issue and then they will deploy that uh, to the release and it is all fine then they will push back that same changes to the master as 1.1 or some other uh, tagging so the same changes has to be pushed back to the development branch so that can be done here in this example they have taken v0.12 hotfix hotfix is released after releasing it it will they will move to the master first then they will also push that changes to the development branch so that you know development branch will not have any conflicts in the future when the feature teams will again push the code so this is in a nutshell for the git flow okay when to use the git actually uh, the applications like windows uh, operating system or office packages or some kind of applications development is happening in the environment and they need to maintain multiple versions of the same software maybe few users may be using 10 and few users may be using windows 11 right so in those kind of cases typical cases uh, git flow is better to use it uh, at the same time the bigger environments with multiple features in parallel and multiple versioning all this can be addressed easily in the git flow uh, use case can be the api version maintenance for example facebook has its own platform with plenty of the apis so they have to maintain multiple versions of the apis because the, for the old users and for the new users as well so for that even case you can use a uh, git flow i'll cover the rest of the branching strategies in my upcoming videos thanks for watching my videos